Good morning, good morning, good morning, St. Paul. It is good to be in the house of the Lord with you all one more time, wherever you may be during this worship service. I would like to say happy Father's Day to all of the fathers out there. You guys do a tremendous job with the task that God has assigned to you. A few announcements. Alzheimer's. Please pray for those persons suffering with Alzheimer's. We have a few in our congregation. We just want to remember to lift them up continuously in our prayers. Yesterday was the first day of summer and I pray that you all got out there and had a little bit of fun. Not too much fun, but just a little bit. If you did not remember that Juneteenth was this past Friday. It is a holiday celebrating the emancipation of those who had been enslaved in the United States. It originated in Texas and is celebrated now annually on the 19th of June throughout the U.S. Specifically, it commemorates the Union Army General Gordon Granger, who announced federal orders in Galveston, Texas on June, June 19, 1865, proclaiming that all slaves in Texas were free. Learn your history, celebrate it. It is important to our future. Food giveaways. Via email, Reverend Smith has been sending out flyers every single week, letting us know that there are free food giveaways at Springfield Baptist Church every single Friday. So if you need to participate, go right ahead and participate. If you need more information, you can definitely check your emails or give the church office a call. 2020 graduates, we have not forgotten about you. I know that last week we had stated that we were going to celebrate you this Sunday, but we have been receiving multiple pictures and multiple announcements and congratulatory emails from parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, and we don't want to leave anyone out. So we will be celebrating you on next Sunday. If you have not sent in your photos or your graduate in whom you want to celebrate, please send those to us no later than this Wednesday. This Wednesday. We do not want to leave anyone out, but if you do not send it to us by Wednesday, I do apologize. We'll celebrate you verbally, but you will not have your picture in the video or celebrated on, on the video. Three ways to give. You can always give via Tidely. Go to your Google store or your app store and download the Tidely app. And you can put in the required information and you can pay your tithes there. If you don't want to do that, you can text GIVE to 844-208-5586. Or you can mail it in to St. Paul AME in Covington, Georgia at P.O. Box 2066, Covington, Georgia. 30015 or you can simply bring it to the church and drop it off. I pray that the Lord continues to bless you and to keep you again happy Father's Day to each and every one of those fathers out there. Good morning St. Paulians. It is good to be in the house one more time. As I'm listening to Reverend Jessica give the announcements and we are celebrating Alzheimer's uh, month. It reminds me of our ancestors and how they would pray and say, Lord, thank you for clothing us in our right mind. It is so good to be able to have the functionalities of our right mind and make good decisions as much as possible, uh, so we think. But with that, again, as we look across the U.S., and not just across the U.S., but across the globe and all the world, we see the continuous marching for justice, for freedom, for equality. And we certainly join in. Even if we're not able to participate in the marches, we certainly pray for the equality to happen, the freedom to be able to live in equity in this country. So with that, let us go to God in prayer. And always, whatever you're doing, stop. Let's give God reverence. Let's just listen attentively, wherever you may be to the word of God through prayer. Father, it is in your righteous son's name, Jesus, that we come to you this morning. Thanking you once again for life, health, and strength, and a right mind, as reasonable as it is. Oh Lord, we come thanking you and praising you 
for you alone are worthy of all our praise. And we say thank you for all your many gifts that you have blessed us with. Father, continue to walk with us and lead us and guide us and help us to make the right decisions during these turbulent times. And if we are reminded of the scripture from our prayer meeting, that 2 Chronicles 7, 14, Oh Lord, we are your people. We are your people who are called by your name. And we humbly come before you right now. Oh Lord, we ask for forgiveness of our sins. We repent of anything that we've done that will be displeasing to you. We ask right now that you would just erase it from our slate, from our record. And oh Lord, give us a clean heart, oh God so that you will renew a right spirit within us, that we will continue to walk in righteousness, to walk in holiness. Oh Lord, you know all about us. You know the hairs that are on our head. We ask, oh Lord, that you will continue to bless our pastor, his spouse, this ministry of staff, these your people that make up the body of Christ, here in St. Paul Church. Bless this community. Bless, oh God, that we will be the people that you are called to continue to be great witnesses for you, to go out and tell the world that the wages of sin is death and the gift of life is eternal life. Oh God, we praise and glorify your name. We ask that you continue to bless our young people who are out of school. Continue to let them know, oh God, that they are our future and that there's a brighter day ahead. That all that is being done, all the marches, all the prayers of protection to protect them, to lead them and guide them is to help secure the future of equality and justice all around. Lord, bless those that are bereaved, those that have lost loved ones by violence, gunshots, by police force, but protect those police officers, oh God, who are doing your will and want to do things right and provide protection all around your people. Help them to secure law and order. Oh God, continue to bless the work of our hands as we continue to go out into the uttermost parts of the world to glorify your name. Oh, Father, we thank you for those that are here assembled. We thank you for those that are listening. We thank you, oh Lord, for those that don't even know you yet in the pardon of their sins, that they too will come to a realization that they also belong to you. We love you. Again, we praise your holy name. And we glorify you for the beauty of all the glory and the heaviness that we see. In Jesus' holy and righteous name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Good morning again, St. Paul. This is Reverend Buford. I will be reading the Old Testament scripture coming out of Psalm chapter 69, verses 7 through 12. For I endure scorn for your sake, and shame covers my face. I am a foreigner to my own family, a stranger to my own mother's children. For zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who insult you fall on me. When I weep and fast, I must endure scorn. When I put on sackcloth, people make sport of me. Those who sit at the gate mock me, and I am the song of the drunkards. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Jessica. Good morning, St. Paul. We bless and thank God for, for our being here once again into the house of prayer. First of all, I would like to thank persons for Friday night prayer service. It was really spiritual and I want to thank the Reverend Eric Flagler for bringing a powerful message. 
and it will consume on on our prayer uh, conference call on next month, the third Friday. God bless you and God keep you. Our scripture lesson this morning is coming from the book of John, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. And I'll be reading from the King James Version, Scofield Bible. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, but no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time? into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I say unto thee, you must be born again. Amen. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou heareth them with the sound thereof. But can it not tell which it cometh and where they go? So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said, answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knoweth not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that what we do know, and testify to that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. For the word of God, the people of God, thanks be, thanks be unto God. Good morning again. God bless you. It is time to give. We've already had our instructions on the ways to give. So now, whatever God has laid on your heart, uh, we ask that you will lift it up right now as we offer it back to God. God, we thank you for the gifts as well as the givers. Oh God, we ask that you bless those who gave, bless those who want to give, bless those who have sown seeds into this ministry, bless those who love St. Paul. Move God in Jesus' name. Amen.
God bless you. God bless you. Good morning once again. It's Father's Day and we are so excited. We thank God for fathers all over this country. But most of all, we thank God for the fathers that are located right here at St. Paul. Normally, we would have some gift to thank God for you with. But since we are not virtually, since we are virtually, let us just reach out and throw our arms around each other and pat each other on the back. Amen. Women, women, don't, don't, don't be jealous. Don't be jealous. We just want to congratulate the men, the fathers of St. Paul and those who may be joining us by way of the airways. We thank God for you also. This morning, I want to thank God for also all those we are honoring who have graduated, uh, have moved from one level of academic success to another level of academic challenge. We thank God that you have not given up the fight. Uh, every round goes higher and higher. So strive perfection, strive for excellence, and hold on to your dreams. Don't let nothing stop you from achieving your goal. Amen. Now this morning, very briefly, very briefly this morning, let us run the Proverbs, the third chapter, verses 11 and 12. From the New International Version, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not resent his rebuke because the Lord disciplined those he loves as a father, the son he delights in. That's Proverbs, the New International Version, but watch. Watch what the Hebrew Bible says. It says basically the same thing, but it clarifies a point that I think need to be made. My son, do not despise the Lord's discipline or the Lord's chastisement and do not resent his correction, his rebuke, because the Lord dis disciplines those he loves and he chastises everyone he accepts as his child. Now that's the Hebrew version of it. He and he chastises everyone he accepts as his child. But I want to focus on the fact that he has said that that because the Lord loves and disciplines as a father. Uh, I had three quick points this morning that I want to make. Being a father is not always easy. Being a father is a challenge. And I dare not uh, skate around this, but sometimes being a black father in America is even harder. We have more challenges than any other race. We have the challenge of trying to find jobs where we are hired last and fired first. We have the challenge of trying to fit in society and just be accepted for the character of our, our person, not the color of our skin. We have challenges of not being having black on black crimes. We have challenges that cause us to want to just, just throw our hands up and say, forget all of this. We have challenges. And then on top of it, the stigma of saying that black men don't take care of their children. Now watch, now watch. I've had the distinct pleasure in my little lot, short lifetime of seeing this new generation uh, walking in the park, black men carrying their babies, one, two, and they change their diapers in the bathroom. I had the privilege in my lifetime seeing black men, not that other men don't do it. I'm saying black men have taken their children to school. Black men support their children at every program level that they go through. Black men. But yet when I was coming up, I was always told black men don't take care of their children. That's not true. I'm so glad and thankful that we have black men who are fathers, not only to their own children, but they have been fathers to those they have chose to bring in to their lives. Now, if you look up in Webster, what's the definition of a father? It gives you a myriad of definitions. But the one that I like the most is, is a male or an individual who takes on the responsibility of caring and nurturing offsprings or of his own or offsprings that he has brought into his life. Now that that's a father. Now watch, watch. 
Perk one number one, mothers love. Mothers have an excellent role in our life. Mothers are there to teach us how to be sensitive. Mothers are there to teach us how to be creative. Mothers are there to teach us how to be intellectual. Yeah, yeah, daddies do it too. But oftentimes, mothers' role in our lives is to help us to fit into certain academic fields, fit into certain, certain, certain social settings, how to eat at the table correctly, how to act in public. That's mother's job. But then when it comes down to the discipline, when it comes down to checking us, when it comes down to making sure that we have our head on right, our listening ears on, that's a father's job, teaching us how to stand up straight. That's a father's job, teaching us how to comb our hair. That, that's a father's job, teaching us how to shave and how to treat a lady. That's a father's job. A amen. Now, women, don't get me wrong. I've seen some ladies do an excellent job of a dual role, being mother and father. But then I've also had the privilege of seeing some men in that dual role, having to be a father and a mother. And they have done an awesome job. So I have to take my hat off, give kudos to black men who have stood up and taken away the stigma that we have been labeled with down through the years. And the second point I want to make this morning, fathers know how to love too. Fathers know how to love too. Fathers know how to love too. Fathers love their children in ways that sometimes we don't understand. Fathers love their children uh, in ways that we sometimes question. When a father has to chastise his child, it hurts him just as much as it hurts the child if he loves his children. When a father has to teach his son how to how to how to how to plow a plow or how to how to how to uh teach his child how to plow, or teach his child how to fix his car, or teach his child how to wear his tie. That's a task that will stick with him and remind him of the bond between a son and a father for a whole lifetime. Now, when they are young, they look for us to protect them. And when they are young, they look for us to be there when they fall and die traits, traits and, and temptation when they are young. But when they are old, we look for them to come and check on us. We look for them to come and, and just say, look, I'm doing all right. And when they've done well in life, fathers are just as proud as mothers. When we can look back and see our children have they've achieved goal after goal after goal, we get excited and we're happy as though we've done it ourselves. I, I like what one of my older brothers told me a long time ago. He said, I, I never got a chance to finish high school. I never got a chance to go to certain fancy places. But when I grew up, I made it a point when I had children to make sure they not only finished high school, but they went to college. I made it a point that they were able to go in the front door and eat at some of the finest establishment places. I never got to go when I was a kid. I wanted them to go. And, and I began to think about that. Whatever I've achieved or accomplished in life, I want my kids to do better. Whatever I have attempted to do, I want them to stand on my shoulders and, 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 and go higher. That's a goal of fathers, always wanting to see their children do better than they did. I, I love it, the fact, the fact that, that fathers, too, can be a dual role. They can be mother and father. They can care for their kids just like anyone else can. And also, they do it because of love. So this morning, just simply, fathers love also. Fathers may not act like mothers all the time, but fathers love also. You know how you know they love? When they have to sacrifice, when they have to give up what their basic needs are to make sure that their kids have the necessities necessary to, so, to be uh, socially accepted. You know how you know they love? When they give you their car and they catch the bus. You, you know how you know they love. They love also. They just like mothers. Mothers sacrifice meals to make sure her kids are hungry. I've known fathers to take the bus so their kids could drive to school. Come on, somebody. I've known fathers to go wear the same suit year in and year out so their kids can have shoes on their feet. Come on, I've seen fathers take away from their own necessity to make sure that their kids, and what really blows my mind is not only when they do it for 
for their blood kid, the ones that they have helped birth, the ones that they have helped father. But when they do it for someone else's kids, that's a that's a father. Not only is that a father, that's a real man. Amen. Amen. So this morning, I want you to know fathers love also, and they do it because they want to do what's right in the sight of God. Our scripture this morning, uh, Proverbs 11 and uh Proverbs 3, 11 and 12 say, my son, do not despise the Lord's discipline and do not uh, resent his rebuke. Every now and then fathers are put in a bad light because it is their job to make sure that discipline is meted out. It's their job to make sure that we understand the rules of society and walk therein. It is their job that we are taught how to be defensive as well as offensive, when to fight and, and when to be a diplomat. It's their jobs to help us understand that we are the head and not the tail, that we are the priest of the household. And therefore, it is their job to help us go to the Lord first. Now, this scripture helps us to understand that God loves us. And because God loves us, God chastises us. And I had to read this more than once. I had to meditate on it. If you love somebody, then you're going to correct them. If you love somebody, then when they fall and die straight, you got to rebuke them. When they walk in wrong, you got to tell them they walk in the wrong. Don't love your children so much that you can't correct them. Don't love your children that you spoil them so bad that can't nobody else stand to be around them because they smell to the high heaven. Don't love your children so much that they lose respect for you. It's a father's job. It's a father's job to know how to love his children and make them viable, interesting, and intricate parts of society. It's a father's job to know that God loves us enough that he chastises us. And it's a, it's a father's job to make sure that they, they know God exists and he's real. Now, mothers play this role every day. Mothers, grannies bring them to church. Grandmama bring them to Sunday school, put them in the choir. And when the fathers realize that we too can do that same thing, it'll be a far better world. If we love our children, if we love our job as a father, just as God loves us, he chastises us. If we love our children with all our heart, then we are showing them how God loves us. So this morning, I want to take my hat off the fathers because fathers know how to love too. Yes, mothers love. Mother bear will fight an army when you come up against her cubs. A cat will fight an army when you come up against her kittens. Mothers will fight, but fathers will go to war also when you attack their children. Proverbs 3, 11 and 12 helps us to understand God loves us enough to chastise us, and those whom he loves, he keeps. And if he chastises everyone he accepts as his child, so when times get hard and you feel like God is chastising you, just know that's love. Just like when fathers deny you or won't give you what you want, just know that's love. Because fathers have had the benefit of being able to go through some things. Mothers have had the benefit of being able to go through some things. And because they have gone through some things, every now and then they have to stop chastise. Not because they don't love you or hate you. It's because they love you. Just like God loves us. So brothers, this morning, I want to thank you for being fathers. I want to thank you for the sacrifices you make. I want to thank you for being visible in your children's lives. And even today, as you sit this Father's Day and being honored, love your children. Let them know. Tell them. Love them. Let them know. Let them know. Let them know. Now be blessed. Let us pray. Our God and our Father, the roads that we travel are not always easy. The jobs that we are given, the tasks that we undertake are not always simple. But God, give us the wisdom and the knowledge to do that which is pleasing in your sight. Teach us to love our family. Let us be good husbands. Let us be good fathers. Let us be good brothers one to another. Let us be awesome examples to those that are looking up to us and following in our footsteps. Come on, God, help us 
to do better. And it's never too late, God. Long as we got breath in our bodies, we know you're able to help us to do better than we have days past and gone. Help us to be good men. We ask you to do these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we thank God for you, and we pray that you have had a blessed, safe week. And to all my seniors and all my mothers, we love you. Take care. We'll be together soon. Tentatively, we are coming back to face-to-face -to -face worship the first Sunday in July. Praying that all is well, let us all pray for that same target date. Let us all pray for that same goal. Now, be blessed. You can reach me at the church on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And all of you that know you have my cell, call me when you get ready. God bless you. God keep you is my prayer. Fathers, love also. God bless you. We hope something song, something prayed. Uh, maybe the preach word has touched your heart. And today you have a desire to give your life to Christ. If you will simply confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and he will come and save you where you are. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and you are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. God bless you. You can reach the church by the numbers that have been displayed. And you can call the pastor by reaching out to St. Paul's website. If you desire to be a member of this church, please get in contact with me now. God bless you, God keep you, God loves you.